Good evening everybody. Um, here's one that's not one of my creations. Um, this was bought off eBay, which I suppose is where most things come from these days. And it was bought solely for parts, or rather initially for parts. Um, the parts themselves, in the main, red parts uh, for my own number 10 Meccano set project. Um, predominantly things like the uh, larger strip plates and the heavy duty plates, the uh, flat plates, boiler, the 167B's uh, large flanged wheel, I think, uh, off the top of my head. Um, that's the flywheel, anyway, you can see. But it's not exactly as it arrived. Um, price wise, if I remember rightly, I paid. Just to give you some sort of idea, I suppose, if you're thinking about this sort of thing, uh, I think it was about 140 posted. It was, I think it was 160, and I offered 140 posted. It's a, it come in a big box, and you know it was a good tenner to post easily. So uh, about 130. Now you might think that's a fair amount of money, and perhaps it is, but. Um, Totting up the prices of uh, the flat plates, which is the base, the top of the base you can see in the picture there. Uh, the flange rings, for example, perhaps in a little bit better condition than that. There's, they're about seventeen ninety-five each, uh, and there's two of them. So straight away you've nearly got forty quid with those. Um, but it's not exactly as it came. It it, it isn't. Oh, I suppose about ninety-eight percent of it, maybe a bit more than that. Um, I've tried a few things. Basically, I've cleaned it, and polished it, um, and and tweaked it. Really, the base initially was a little bit, uh, so say, soft, a bit flexible, if you like. Uh, there was no um, support really, apart from the frame that that makes sort of like the box section of the base. There's nothing underneath the flat plates, or there wasn't. There is now. Uh, so it was a bit. Uh, a bit flexible. Um, where you see in front of you on the bottom, anywhere where I think there should be a washer, so on a uh, slotted hole, any slotted hole, or any plate that's a good condition plate, flexible plate, it's had a washer put on. Um, mostly using the original uh, bolts that were in the build, I've had to add a few. Um, I say it's had a good clean, a good lube. Uh, it's been tweaked, it's been run on steam, which uh, I'll put the clip in anyway, but it has been run at, uh, under steam power at Blistill the first weekend. Look for that video, it's a fairly recent video. Um, but I will put the, the little clip in towards the end of this. Uh, and it was just run recently on steam um, at Winterbourne House Toy Steam and uh, Traditional Hobbies Day. Um, there's no video of that, uh, mainly because this is one of the you might say lucky models. Now when I got it I intended to do what I've said, clean it up, tweak it a bit and um, and run it for a while. Now my rule is generally to make a model and unless it changes a fair bit or it's part of a collection I don't show them again at a show. Or perhaps it will be shown at one show and then maybe live stream the next show. So it won't be exactly the same if you like. Um, I know it's unlikely that you get the, exactly the same people come through the door at shows, but just for me personally, I like to have a bit more variety as well. So this one is one of the few that's been out twice with no change. Um, I was going to run it off a mech one at Winterbourne, but for some reason I can't find them. <laughs> There's one already doing something. Uh, and there's a couple that haven't been uh, checked and cleaned before running yet. So I stuck with the uh, mid 70s Mamad SE 2A and it, it does the job very well indeed and, and that was the engine that was on at um, Bliss Sill this year. Uh, no problems there. It was on about half a dozen times at Winterbourne, not a, not a great deal because we were running the trains as well as most other things and mechanoid. So I bought it, it was a bit grubby, a bit rusty. Now the uh, watt linkage, watts linkage I should say, which is this here, isn't quite right. It's not really in line, but it doesn't really matter because you've got the 
Um, universal joints, sorry for my creaking floor. As you can see now, uh, uh, good you'll see the uh, both the piston rods and the uh, connecting rod for the valves, which is here. You notice they will flex slightly from your point of view, left and right, or almost left and right. So it's not quite right. Really, it needs to be about half an hour difference. So I've tried tweaking that to get it better. But it gives you an idea of what it's supposed to do. It's a very smooth runner as well. Originally, there was about 10 um, five hole, two and a half inch green strips underneath here. And uh, that was just counterbalance, but basically I got it to a certain standard, then run it on steam and tweaked as I went. Uh, to that end, uh, those uh, strips were put on the flywheel, the better ones on the outside, uh, doubled up to add a little bit more weight and a bit more uh, strength to the flywheel because it's very flexible and very easy to knock out a true. It's not bad as it is, um, but it took me a while to get to that stage. Fortunately, last trip out it didn't get knocked, so it was all right. Uh, there's plenty of collars, uh, going back to the price of it, there's plenty of collars. They're 60p each at a dealer. I mean, we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there. Um, there is some extra ones that are put on because there were spring clips and I've replaced those. In fact, I did try at these uh, pivot points here and at the rear. Uh, the collar, the brass collar, which is one of these. And though it run very smoothly, it didn't look as good. And it runs quite smooth as it is. So I went back to these uh, parts here, which you probably just there, you can see there. They just had a little bit more to the uh, to the look, a little bit more involved. Was, you might say it was a bit too streamlined, if you like, with the colours. So basically, um, just cleaned and tweaked up. And because I removed that uh, counterbalance uh, to elsewhere, uh, it was having trouble running quite smoothly and slowly and uh, to this end I had uh, one of these spare in my spares box on the day these uh, triple cone pulleys got three pulleys on there, they're quite weighty there's one on the other side as well they add a little bit to the uh, the look as well and to be honest they're just a tad, just a tad heavy uh, but it's, it's run fine really uh, another thing played around with was the governor. Um, it does work. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I have to go really fast, but it does work, but not at the slow speeds or realistic speed speeds. Getting it to run smoothly at a realistic slow speed is quite awkward doing it yourself. You either find that you just go that little bit too fast, or you stall, or almost stall. The counterbalance now with these being almost right, not quite, means that it's a lot easier than it was. But you can get some right speed out of it. And I'll show you that speed if it doesn't all fall off when I do it. Look at the governor. Um, I might have to do a close-up. You will see it works. Now I'm going to do this and don't shout at me because I'm going to have to go fast now. I don't know if you can see that in the long distance shot or it has risen a little bit. And if I stop, it should drop down unless it's going to get stuck. There we are, just dropping down there. Now, I messed around with this a bit, putting different things on different weights. But basically, I put another collar on and I put the spring on, but the spring is really just for a bit more look, a bit more detail if you like. And just in case you didn't see it, look at this part here between this coupling and this um, collar there. Get going again. You see it raised there? So it does actually work in the fact that the weights do swing out the faster it goes. Of course it's far too um, it's far too fast uh, to give it a realistic uh, sort of impression. But it does work in a fashion. Uh, majority of that is all the previous builders or the builders doing. I say I've just tweaked it, cleaned it, add the spring, a little bit more to look at. For my purposes, this was the rear of the engine for display. 
the steam engine would sit about here on a piece of wood and um, it was a modern uh, yellow, um, it's not rubber, some sort of plastic, maybe neoprene, uh, Meccano drive band onto there. Um, I'll show you the drive which is quite simple in a bit but I kept it low to try and keep it out the way around the back which it is. Mostly hidden of course, not all of it. Um, I've used to connect all the pulleys up um, spring cord uh, drive bands cut to suit but with some pulleys they don't grip very well uh, because the uh, especially the half inch Meccano pulleys there's quite a wide uh, V in the pulley V groove so it, uh, you tend to have to put um, a small O ring on that helps you out. But I'll just show you now, I'll operate it. I can see it's already starting to fall apart and some of the or one of the O rings on one of the pulleys has come off. But there you go. Try and get out of your way a bit. So the steam engine will be connected here, and with the steam engine running quite fast, even with the minimal reduction, you can get it to run quite nicely. Because I have got a speed control fitted to that SE2A Meccano, of course, which means I can slow it down even more. So there you can see the drive to the uh, flywheel shaft. Keeping it a bit unobtrusive without going to the trouble of putting it underneath. Uh, meant to keeping it low and of course most of it is behind something. You've got behind the main uh, pillar here for the beam and behind the governor. So it's not too in your face. The uh, spring cord drive bands tend to not stand out too much. And I was saying about the... Uh, well it seems to be doing alright. I was saying about the lack of friction on the uh, half-inch mechano pulleys because of the wider groove compared to the uh, what are they're not mammoth but they're a similar um, drive band that you cut to length and twist together there we've got uh, the remains of an o-ring which uh, was on that one but it seems to be doing alright and uh, none of the others have got them on so that must have been the last one I did after all my experiments so we've got uh, obviously two inch on the uh, initial drive off the steam engine that goes down to a half inch then to a one inch and then a one inch up to this one and a half inch I did initially use one of the uh, um, previously showing you at the top the um, triple comb pulleys uh, so I could have a bit of variation if I needed but that didn't work the trouble of course with fitting it so low to the base I was restricted on the pulleys I could use the one inch really being the most without lifting this up a little bit more was the largest I could use really but as you can see there it uh, you might hear the odd ping of the uh, drive bands occasionally they do slip a little but that in itself is no bad thing if it slips a little because if somebody decides to put the finger in the flywheel it will slip I hope I'm going to demonstrate it now so we're going around, we're not going too fast. Oh, little Johnny. Oh, my finger. So you can see. And a lot of the, the shows, mechano wise, do require you to put some sort of slip drive. Anyway, so. Usually they go to more extremes, like a clutch. But you don't need to do that. If you've got gears, just make sure you've got a drive band somewhere in it. Um, but there you go. I mean, it's. Uh, quite a simple model, quite a nice looking model and I have almost been tempted to leave it together but needs must um, space and I need the parts and that's what it was bought for so essentially all these uh, flat plates here they'll be going into the number 10 set build as will the boiler and the green stuff won't be because I'm going zinc um, for that sort of thing strips wise and uh, angle girders um, but these uh, on the side, well, sides, these strip plates, as they call them, large flexible plates, they'll be uh, going into the number 10. Um, red and zinc is the predominant colour for those, or colours for those. Now, I'll just show you underneath what I've done for the most part. I'll put some feet on. Normal one inch uh, pulleys with the tyres on. 
and uh, that's mainly to stop it making a row really um, should it do that and we put some extra bracing in the corners you can just make out uh, there and up there here, there and here um, the extra bracing that one looks like it's took a bit of a kink fitting it in or when it's been uh, been transported to the showers the odd girder here and there just to stiffen things up a little bit and also the same reason as I said before I've stiffened the base a little bit here where all the weight bears down on it just there and uh, there just to stiffen it up a little bit and you can see um, it'll work you can see the rods the actual rods moving up and down there underneath a very nice model beam engine uh, made the best as I can tell I've checked the instruction books for many years and it's not a, anyone from uh, an instruction book looking at some of the parts used instead of perhaps others that could have been used say out of a number 10 set or a 9 uh, it's I think safe to say it is a freestyle model that's been made out of somebody's uh, brain box maybe just looking at a few pictures in a few books um, I've really just tweaked it, cleaned it added the odd little bit um, it's just a bit of soft detail like um, in the opening scene the little lever here um, I'd only got the one brass fitting and so I couldn't do anything like handrails or I did consider doing some stuff with um, narrow strips but that's it now it'll be taken apart very shortly um, the red parts or majority of the red parts used in the number 10 project uh, number 10 set project the greens will be put away for use for some of the models in the near future no doubt